Hi, I'm Curtis Haynes, and I'm here to talk about how to use Permatex epoxies. We want you to get the best possible results when using our products. So today, we have some tips on how to get the maximum repair strength from our epoxies. To show you proper epoxy prep and application, we'll use our Permatex 5-minute gap filling epoxy. Give yourself a clean, open work area. Make sure you've got all necessary supplies for prep, cleaning, mixing, application, and cleanup. And that includes safety glasses, disposable gloves, paper towels, rubbing alcohol, and sandpaper. You may also want to have clamps or other devices to hold parts together while the epoxy sets up. Before you start, double check the package instructions for the working time, the fixture time, and the cure time. The working time is the time you have to get the epoxy mixed, applied, and the repair pieces put together. For most of our liquid epoxies, you want to mix for up to a minute, except for the one minute epoxy, where you should only mix for about 20 to 25 seconds. The one minute epoxy has a blue dye that disappears when the epoxy is completely mixed. Pretty cool. For our epoxy sticks, you want to knead the two parts together for no more than two minutes. When you're done mixing, the liquid or putty should have a completely uniform color. The epoxy fixture time is the time that the epoxy needs before the repair can be safely handled. And again, this varies with each of our formulas. But remember, you don't get the full strength of a repair until the epoxy is completely hardened and that's the cure time. Before you start, rough up the bonding surfaces with sandpaper if you can. Having a surface that's a little rough will help the epoxy hold better. And be sure that the surfaces are completely clean. Oil, dirt, and dust can ruin the bond. So we've done our prep and double checked our timing and we're ready to mix some epoxy. You'll need something to mix with and our epoxy syringes have a plastic breakaway mixing paddle in the center of the plunger which needs to be removed before dispensing. A clean popsicle stick also makes a good mixing stick and it won't react with the epoxies. If you're going to use a cup to mix in, make sure it's something you can throw away when you're done. And remember, epoxies can really heat up when they cure. A plastic cup may actually melt from the heat and let the liquid leak out. When you're mixing epoxy, use a decent amount. If you try to mix just a tiny bit, it can be hard to get the 50-50 mix of liquid and hardener that you'll need to get a successful bond. Our syringe dispensers make it easy to get a 50-50 mix and their sealing caps keep the two parts safe between uses. Once you've started mixing your epoxy, keep an eye on the clock. Make sure that you follow the correct mixing time for best results. When you're ready to apply the epoxy, you want to apply it to both surfaces that you're bonding. Your mixing device can also be used to apply your epoxy, but it can be easier to get precise application if you use a separate applicator. You can use anything from a toothpick to a spackle knife, depending upon how much surface area you need to cover. You're going to apply a thin, even coating, but make sure that you're not applying it all the way to the edges. Leave a little room for the epoxy to spread out. And now, you can bring the two pieces together. Apply consistent pressure to keep the parts firmly together as the epoxy sets up. If some epoxy does squeeze out, clean it off before it sets up. You can use rubbing alcohol, acetone, lacquer thinner, or mineral spirits to clean any excess but don't let the cleanup interfere with keeping the parts firmly together. Try not to let any epoxy cure where you don't want it. In most cases, cured epoxy can only be removed mechanically or by scraping. If you get uncured epoxy on your skin, first wipe it off with a clean cloth or paper towel, and then use Permatex Fast Orange hand cleaner and lots of water to get the rest off. Be patient, it may take some time to remove it. While you're letting your epoxy cure, you want to make sure it's not in direct sunlight. It can cause some clear epoxies to turn yellow, and some epoxies are just naturally yellow when they cure. In addition to keeping the epoxy out of direct sunlight, you want to make sure that you keep your repair away from long-term exposure to water, unless you're working with a waterproof epoxy. A question we get a lot is can you use epoxy in place of a superglue? Super glue is good when you need a really thin application, say, gluing a china cup back together. 
Epoxies are for applications where structural repair and holding strength are more important than a thin repair. Epoxies are not really a replacement for superglue and vice versa. You can learn more about our epoxies and other Permatex adhesives at our website, permatex.com. We have downloads for safety data sheets and technical data sheets with complete instructions and specs on all our epoxies. And for advice on choosing the right type of epoxy for your repair, check out our other Permatex epoxy series videos. I'm Curtis Haynes for Permatex, and thanks for watching.